Hello and welcome back to another session. In one of our previous sessions, we learned about AWS Lambda, its features and major highlights. You can find the link in the description if you haven't seen that already. In today's session, we will get into AWS console and see everything in action. So let's get started. We are going to divide this session into four sections. In the first part, we will see how to create a Lambda function, which includes how to upload your code, setting up trigger and updating code as we edit it. The next session, we will see how to set up the execution role used by Lambda to perform its job, followed by how to configure test events to test your Lambda function. Then finally, we'll end the session with actually testing our Lambda in real time and monitoring the logs. We will do this by picking a specific use case. This is our use case at hand. So user uploads a text file to S3 bucket, which will trigger our Lambda function. Then the Lambda function assumes an IAM role and converts the text file to PDF file. Once it's converted, it then uploads it to an S3 bucket. During this process, it writes any logs to CloudWatch log groups, which helps us to troubleshoot and monitor. So we are in the AWS console now. I'm using the free account that we had set up in one of the previous sessions and logged in as an IAM user with admin access. So our first step in the process was to create a Lambda function. For that, we will get into the Lambda service and hit create function. You will be asked for the basic details for of the function, like the function name. Let's keep it simple and call it as listen to learn bucket handler. And then the runtime. I'm going to use Python here, but feel free to use the language of your choice. While creating Lambda, AWS will create an IAM role along with it, which will have some default permissions to enable the Lambda to write to CloudWatch logs. If you want, we can change it to already existing role or create a new one. For now, I'm going to leave it as default. And our advanced testing settings has two options, code signing and network. Code signing is to ensure that your code has been uploaded and signed by an approved source and to prevent it being edited by everyone. And you can choose to put the Lambda in a specific VPC if needed. I'm going to leave them as blank for now and creating the Lambda function. So AWS takes a couple of minutes to do it. And so we have our Lambda function now, which has the basic code. Next, let's set up a trigger. In our case, we are going to set up an S3 trigger, which will ask us for a bucket name. So when we upload the files to this bucket, a Lambda gets triggered. So I've already created a few buckets, so I'm going to select one of them. Then we can specify a particular prefix or suffix for the files uploaded. I'm going to specify .txt in suffix because we want this to be triggered only for text files. Then notice that Lambda will add the required permissions for S3 to invoke this into the IAM role. And also we have to acknowledge that we are not supporting any recursive invocation because Lambda will start running in loops, which will increase the cost. So we have added the trigger now. Now, now let's upload our business logic into the Lambda. So for this, I have already written a local function and have converted it into a zip. Before that, this is the default function which gets created when we are creating the Lambda, which is just a simple Hello World uh, program. Now going to Visual Studio. So this is a simple function which gets the records from S3 and converts it into PDF and uploads it back to S3. So ensure that the dependencies are added to the same zip folder as your uh, main function is there. 
And in this case, we just have one dependency. So I've added the library in that in there. And I'm going to upload the zip file here. Select upload and select the zip file. And save it. So once saved, you can see that the Lambda gets automatically deployed and the function code is updated to your new, new code. So now let's head back to the console and we are going to set up the IAM role. You can see the role attached to your Lambda in the permission section of the Lambda. So this is the default role which is added while creating the Lambda. Let's modify that rule to allow get object from the S3 bucket and put object to another S3 bucket. I have already created the S3 bucket with their default settings. So now we are going to add permissions for that. So this is the default policy which is created while creating the Lambda. So which has access just to the log group. Now let's edit this policy and as you can see it just has the CloudWatch logs access. Now we are going to add additional permissions. You can either do it with JSON format directly or using the visual editor. So I'm going to do it with visual editor for now. So I'm selecting S3 and get object. We are going to allow get object from listen to learn. So that is where our objects are going to be uploaded. So it shouldn't be in the object name. Uh, instead, I have to put it in the bucket. and allow all the objects and add and the next permission would be same s3 service but this time it's going to be put object to our destination bucket where our converted uh, pdfs are going to be stored so again, add ARN and in the bucket name, you should specify the other bucket name and all the objects. Add. And once we have added these two permissions, we can review the policy. As you can see, those are added here. Get object and the put object. And once that done, we can save the policy. So that should work now. We have the policy attached to the role and which is in turn attached to our Lambda. Okay, we are in the final stage now. Let's do some actual testing by uploading a file to the bucket. So we are going to go to S3 and upload a text file to listen to learn bucket which is our source bucket so click on upload and click on add files and select one of the files from your local this is a text file which just has which just has hello world as a text in it and upload so it has been uploaded successfully. Now let's check the other bucket to see if it is actually converted and stored. Yes, there it is. So let's quickly download it and see the content if it has the exact content which we are looking for. Yes, it has perfectly converted it. 
So then if we head back to the Lambda console, you can go and check the logs. There'll be, there'll be a link to CloudWatch logs in the monitoring section. So if you view the logs, it has some useful information about the number of seconds the Lambda actually ran and the build duration. So as you can see here, it has recorded the start and the end of the request and also the report which has the build duration and the actual Lambda size and also the duration in which the Lambda has run. So as you can notice, the build duration will be a roundup of the actual duration and the actual memory used. And also if you go back to the Lambda console, you can see some of the metrics like the number of invocations and the duration of each invocation. So I was playing around with the Lambda a few minutes back. So those are the invocations, number of invocations and the duration in which it runs. And also you can see the success and error rates. So which, which will be pretty useful while analyzing it. And also you can set up a test so that you can run the test without uploading the Lambda uh, bucket files to the bucket every time. So there are some default uh, event templates. You can select S3 put as one of the templates and you have to modify the bucket names to the actual existing bucket names. So here I'm changing it to listen to learn. And also the key must be the actual existing key. So in our case, it is hello world.txt. So once that is done, you can create the uh, test, e test event. It'll require a test event name as well, which can be anything. Create it. And if you run on tests, It'll actually execute your Lambda and then show the test results here and the logs as well. So that's it guys. Hope you found it useful. Please let me know in case of any questions in the comments below. We'll see you soon in the next session. Thank you.